Hi everyone, welcome back to Loft Legacy. Tonight, I've had a real treat. I've been to see Superman, or it was originally called Superman the Movie, at the cinema for its 45th anniversary release. And what a treat, what an absolute treat. It's the 143 minute original version of Superman. Watching my local view cinema with my family. And I had a lovely evening. Now, we're all extremely familiar with Superman, or Superman the movie, on Blu-ray, and it's about to hit the shelves in 4K. But I saw it first at the cinema, at the Palace Cinema in Blackburn, in 1978. Uh, went with my dad. I was five, five years old. And yeah, I can remember it vividly. I can remember certain scenes. I can remember Krypton. I can remember the scenes on Krypton. I can remember the Phantom Zone coming down for General Zod, Ursa and Non. Isn't it funny? Isn't it funny how I can remember 45 years ago, so when I was a kid. Uh, it is, yeah, I can remember when he, he held the railway line up. It's strange how you know memories on cinema are so vivid and just stuck in my mind from age, you know, 45 years ago, age five. So this is the second video where I'm talking about the Palace Cinema in Blackburn. When I went, it was absolutely freezing. It really was. I remember my dad sat there with a coat on. It was freezing when I went to see it back in 1978. Uh, as I mentioned in the last video, they converted an old... Victorian theatre into a cinema and split the theatre so the stalls downstairs were a bingo hall and upstairs with the circle was the cinema so you had a massive expanse in front of the seats until, until you got to the screen and I, re I remember all these when Superman was flying all these kids flying around <laughs> flying around this guy going yeah, okay, <laughs> so I do remember that as well, vividly in 1978. Uh, but back to 2023, it's obviously from a 45-year re-release, not an anniversary. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I'm really glad, really glad we went. One, one thing of interest: it's a PG. It's been re-rated by BBFC in 2020 for cinema release. So it had a brand new. BBFC black card, a modern black card, which the James Bond re-releases didn't have, you know. When I queried this with BBFC, they were still, you know, Diamonds Are Forever was still aerated from 1971. So this, I don't know why in 2020, it was, it was, it was resubmitted to BBFC for the cinema. Now, it is a PG. Uh... My little boy cried a little bit when Superman, when Jor-El said goodbye to Superman. He got a bit upset. I felt really like the worst parents in the world. Um, if you haven't seen Superman, just close your ears. I'm going to tell you what happens at the end, so major spoiler. So I'll just count to 20 if you've never seen Superman before. Uh, when Lois at the end gets killed... He cried again, even though I'm going, it's all right, it's all right. It's going to save us, it's going to save us. So I, I think because it's Easter Sunday, we've had the Easter eggs, we've had all that today. Uh, so I think we're just a little bit tired at six o'clock. The film starts at six o'clock, but there the seems to be more adverts than usual. No one wants to trails about the adverts. It just went on and on and on and on. And on. It, is, it is ridiculous, it really is. I know some screenings I've seen recently I've actually had the film you know will start between this time and this time which is the film with the trailers and the adverts are but anyway that's that's just I think that's cinemas the world over as for the film it looked brilliant you really forget watching it on a TV and we've all seen it lots of times on blu-ray and dvd and that's on broadcast television over the years it's a great film I don't need to tell you what a great film it is. What struck me was the romance. You know, the romance really jumped out tonight. Uh, the flying scene with Superman and Lois. I've never, I've never bothered about that scene before. It's never really done much for, for me. But 
with a cinema sound system. I felt quite moved tonight. I really, I thought really, really good. Christopher Reeve, wow, what can you say? He just looks perfect to Superman. He was perfect to Superman. Uh, I don't think he'll ever be surpassed in the role. His charm, his light comedy with Clark Kent. Perfect, perfect, perfect. The perfect person for the role. And his dedication to bulk up. So when he's actually on the cinema screen, head to toe in costume, what a magnificent specimen, God rest his soul, Christopher Reeve was. And well, what a great actor. You know, so to flip between the comedy of Light Titans of Clark and a very, very, very straight down the line performance of Superman. Great cast. Uh, Gene Ackman stole every scene. He's in, in the movie. Brilliant. Uh, Marlon Brando getting top billing will always be contentious, especially when he is reading off cue cards off screen because he couldn't be bothered learning his lines. But he looks great and he has a great, he has a great commanding presence. A fantastic classic film. I don't need to tell you about that. One thing that stood up tonight with a flying zoptic flying effects. It was, it was superb. They really did. You know, 45 years later, made in a very analog world in today's digital world, they look fantastic. Uh, what didn't look fantastic was uh, the dam scene and the village at the bottom of the dam, and it looked very much uh, model, <laughs> small scale model city. That didn't all look very well at all. But it all creates this. The filmmakers they didn't go back. George Lucas-esque and tamper with these things, left it as it is, which is nice. We've all seen the extended director's cut. I've kind of got confused between the two. I was off expecting Lois Lane to be on a train as a little girl. It's like, oh, it's so certain things that you expect to be in the original uh, weren't I? which is not no great shakes. But yeah, the flying effects were, were excellent. Nice amount of film, gra film grain on the projection. It is a rather soft looking film in parts, which adds to the charm. You know, it is dedicated to Jeffrey Unsworth, the cinematographer. And yeah, it's a it's a beautiful looking film. John Williams' score, right. It's always sounded great. Tonight it sounded just even better. Uh what a what a purple patch he had. So he went Jaws, Star Wars trilogy. Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Indiana Jones films, to name a few, with Superman somewhere in the middle. So the score is all, all the way through from the, the Krypton theme to Lois's theme and the love theme to the Superman march. It's, 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 it's a perfect film score for the movie. It really is. And I can't imagine the film without the music to be honest and it's not just the Superman march it's as in all of Williams's films the music just move the the drama emotion and the action along you know it jogs along, it jogs along quite nicely the film it is a bit of a skewed film it's a long time uh, Christopher Reeve doesn't visually appear in it for quite a long time I'm, yeah uh, I, I did one this on you know it takes a bit to get going but I think this is because it's a film series and forget what happened with the with, you know later on in the series it, it's a perfect time to introduce the character and the back the way they tell the backstory is is excellent it, it it really is too much focus these days on problems making the film and richard Donner not getting on with the producer and Richard Lester coming for Superman 2 and this is Richard Donner cut. Look, Superman 2, I like the original, I like the Donner cut. The Donner cut is a little bit better, maybe, but Superman 2, I loved it when it came out of the cinema. Yes, they made, they tried to make both films together as we know, but they didn't. But you know, all these behind the scene problems should not detract in any way from. Superman, which is just called Superman. Uh, at the cinema and on the original cinema poster, it, it says Superman the movie. Uh, I'm just looking at the original BBFC rating, and it was just, it was just rated as Superman. So I don't know where the movie come from. Was it on the Blu-ray? 
Superman the movie on the Blu-ray. So it's, it's, it's a bit of a strange one. Not anything I'm going to lose any sleep on. This is a really good Blu-ray set. Loads of extras. If you like Superman, this is a very, very affordable way to get all films. And it's got Superman the movie, Superman the movie, the extended 180 odd minute version, Superman 2, Superman 2, Richard Donnacott, Superman 3, Superman 4, Quest for Peace. And Superman Returns. So this is a cracking, you know, you can pick this up pretty cheap with the imminent, imminent arrival of the Blu-ray, uh, the, the 4K Blu-ray set. So obviously the movie's been released at the cinema in 4K. It's coming out on 4K Blu-ray. It's going to look awesome. It's going to look awesome. As I said, at the cinema tonight, a nice amount of film grain. Uh, I like to see film grain. In an older movie, it's the way it was shot, and the way, it's the way we should sort of see it. And um, unfortunately, I've not much merchandise. I've got a few toy cars, a bit along the way. After it come out, for some reason, I've got a Superman towel. <laughs> Why I've kept it? Well, I'll put it. I'll put it behind me. Uh, I've got a Superman towel, and I remember going swimming <laughs> at school with this towel. I've kept. I've got an Empire Strikes Back towel as well. Completely uncollectible, but there you go. A Superman towel from late seventies, early eighties. There's no actual date on it, so all good fun. So if you haven't seen Superman, it is a must-see film. Uh, forget about the new DC. Yeah, Henry Cavill's perfectly fine as Superman, but Christopher Reeve made the parties on instantly. Tragic what happened to him with his accident and his early. His early passing, but you know what a legacy. Well, you know, what, a, what a great actor as well in, in other things. You know, people think he's, he's just Superman, but he's in lots of films, and he was a very well respected stage actor when he he took on the part of Superman. They had to bulk up with Dave Prowse as his personal trainer, getting that fantastic specimen. You know, Chris Reeve was uh, in in amazing shape. One little anecdote set was when they were making the film. One of the films at Pinewood, in the Roger Moore book, Last Man Standing, he actually said that Christopher Reeve used to come for lunch in his Superman costume. So he stood there with a tray, with his lunch on it, waiting to pay, he went to queue up for his meat and potato pie, whatever he was having. And Roger said he'd, he'd actually come in the dressing room, the, the, the Pinewood canteen. So he said he'd have all the, into the Pinewood canteen, it was very in groups, he'd have the carry-on team down one end, he'd have the bond in one end, and you know, at the time they had Superman in, and they said all the ladies were swooning over Chris Reeve because he looked so fantastic. And he, Roger said when he walked into the canteen, it's like, wow, a bit bizarre. Superman's going to train, getting his lunch, <laughs> whatever he had for lunch. But Roger said that Chris Reeve was an extremely nice man and a real gentleman, and not only a great actor, you know, one of the this film was a big risk. This could have gone badly wrong. So they nailed it with the casting of Superman. Nailed it with the casting of Lex Luthor. They nailed it with his optic, optical effects. Soundtracks, one of the most iconic ever. The score, sorry, one of the most iconic ever. And here we are, years later, back at the cinema. I'm back 45 years back at the cinema. Wow. Watching, watching this film. Um, happy memories, happy memories from 45 years ago, and I've really enjoyed it tonight. And I've really enjoyed talking about Superman the movie, it's just Superman as it's called now, with yourselves and our YouTube channel. So thanks very much for watching, as always. Take care, everybody, and hope to see you again soon.